put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I either have or will cover other parts of this franchise and this video either is or will be linked below. I'm not going to restate here what I did or will say in the other video. These videos get long enough as it is. I got this either as present or I got it on discount. so. I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. So after tonight, 2016 will be over. You hear that celebrities? You can go ahead and stop dying. I joke that the last few will hurry up and do so, but Honestly, I I don't want to jinx it. You know, the last couple even died from heart stuff because none of us took Trump winning very well. Die Brücke or The Bridge from 2008, the, the TV movie. Starting with the plot. Actually, briefly, taglines first. The 1959 one says, They look for love in a world of violence. That makes it sound like there's way more romance than there is. They're really not looking for love at all. They're very eager to fight. If anything, they at least think they do invite the violence. Now, the 2008 one says, For honor, for glory, for victory. Now, that fits. It sounds like the kind of propaganda that the boys have been told. So, near the end of World War II, in a small border village, seven 16-year-old schoolboys are conscripted as the front moves ever closer, and they're made to defend the small local bridge. Now, like the original, they do look distinct from each other. You can tell them apart, and their appearance always fits what they're playing. But really, in this one, they have less, like, distinct character moments. So you do kind of, you know, if, if, I, was, if I was looking at, like, a, like, if you had, like, a mug shot, so, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, where you just see the faces of each of them, and you asked me, okay, which is which, and what personality do each have, I could maybe more or less get that right but as I'm watching the movie they don't individually do much to separate themselves from the others which the first one did a very good job of and the book especially now there are some dramatic things that the boys either do or experience in the book these are flashbacks and just, yeah, you know, things that have happened a while before the conscription. In the 1959 movie, there's like a series of these very early in the film, before the conscription, or at least before they arrive at the military base. And it gets kind of contrived in the 1959 version, how all of these dramatic things are happening over just a few days in a row. And then right after they're conscripted, you know, they, again, in the book, these are things, excuse me, these are, you know, let's say it's maybe this one year all of this has happened. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure, I can believe that all that happened over a year, but a few days. And in this one, it gets a little better, but that's also because there aren't, again, there aren't a lot of these. And the... The ones they've chosen to go for are these really obviously like attention grabby kind of like the illicit stuff and such. 
but there is also a little that is told by a character as you know this happened back then and some of it happens later in the film in this one it actually does in the first one yeah the the in the 1959 one the they're in the military maybe halfway through and then the rest of the film is them defending the bridge in this one the the military stuff starts about 20 minutes in and yeah it doesn't stay with just like the there's they are there defending the bridge from then not from 20 minutes but yeah from not long after that throughout the rest of the film but it goes to other characters as well and yeah things happen there that in the book were things that happened way back i think one of the things actually might be a th yeah one of them is like a thing that happened when the when one of the teenagers was like seven if i recall or i might be mixing two things up but yeah on plot I knew from this movie's reputation that it would not be the anti-war masterpiece that the original was. There are some good aspects to it. The, the score is quite good, very haunting, and the opening isn't bad. It, it has this truckload of villagers, including one of the boys, and you know they're driving across the bridge, and the music there is especially strong. And these are families who were bombed out of their their own houses. You know, they, they had to move because they couldn't live where they used to live. It's been bombed completely apart. And I, uh, that is something that, you know, li literally seeing a main character displaced that's really strong, and that's how the movie opens. It, it should be stronger than it is in this movie, but nevertheless. And that is something that's maybe a little stronger here than in the first one. And the, the original does have the detail that people can't you know, live in this or that place because bombs keep hitting and such, but it's, it's a little more close to home here and it's of course in the book as well this movie is kind of slow Cons you know considering how much how much happens and the fact that it's not that long the the movie it's it's a hundred minutes with the end credits and 96 and a half without them yeah that's that's really not that much there's if you can't keep your audience engaged for at least a hundred minutes, you just you you need to improve. You know that's that is something that at the very least is something you should be able to do if if it's especially what you're setting out to do. And this is a fairly commercial product. This is not some big art film where you know. There's shenanigans music in this movie, more than once, and one of the times it goes on once the boys have submachine guns pointed at them. Yeah, and, and this is, it's, it's a thing that was in the book, and not really in the first, I, I forget if they maybe hint at it and mention, but, but it's, yeah, and, and that, is, that is something I appreciate about this movie. It went back to the book and said, okay, we're not going to outdo the original, obviously. How? Ab what about some things that are in the book that aren't in the original? And, and I can understand, you know, it is, it is essentially shenanigans, but like I said, the movie opens with this truckload of people who have been, who, who had to leave their homes because they were bombed apart. And then you have shenanigans. It's just, yeah. It, it really, the, 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 
yeah, there, there are some really big bad shifts in like tone and such. I'll, I'll get more into that. And very early on, the the gym is emptied of students and then filled with wounded, and that again, I don't think is in the original. I don't remember 100% if it's in the book. It might be a new edition, but it's, in theory, again, a good idea. It, it, that is something that happened, you know. No, Jim is cancelled. We need the space to tend to the wounded. And, you know, and, th and then two of the students are asked to, to stay, one of them to, to move the, the gym equipment so that there's room. And the girl who's asked to stay is asked to make to, to boil some water and make tea for them. So, yeah. You know, as if that was the most obvious thing. You know, the boy is not going to make tea. He probably, he doesn't even know how. how. Why would he? What kind of man would know how to make tea back then, you know? So, the girl, she knows how to do it. She's going to do it. It doesn't matter whether she wants to or not. Whether she might think it's really upsetting to be around these, all these wounded people. You know, a 16-year-old girl. But, yeah. Now, the effects can be okay, but you can really tell when it's added in post and, and such. And you have big fireball explosions, which is just, yeah, again, just does, does not fit with, with the tone. This is, this is not a, let's cheer for the, the destruction we're seeing. It's, it's not supposed to be like a Hollywood action movie. You know, it's supposed to really get to you, and it's supposed to make you think about the destruction, a big fireball explosion, and I think there's even, like, cheering afterwards, and, and you know, that's, of course, it's the boys, because they think they're doing amazing things, but, yeah, the movie seems to almost kind of agree with them, and that's, that's really, really wrong. And the movie goes kind of bigger than the original. It is pretty authentic. It's fairly well-researched. And honestly, at times it's not bad. It it can even be tense or such. But other times it's just hilariously inept, just so incompetently made. I don't understand why all the German, the the every adult German in the military in this movie basically are pure evil. You know, it, Germany has been very honest about its history in cinema since the end of World War II. Really going in and exploring and saying, why did this happen? You know, they, they made Hitler and his, the, the people closest to him, human. So why to take the propaganda approach and say, ah, Nazis were all evil? You know, it's, it's, yeah. Again, something the original does far, far better. Now, going over some of what others have said in their reviews. Yeah, one, one IMDb reviewer notes, yeah, this is going to be purely for IMDb reviews because nobody, I, I looked for it on Rotten Tomatoes, on Metacritic. Nope, no one, but, you know, at, at least a dozen people or more reviewed it on IMDb, so yeah. It is what its producers want it to be, filled with more action and romance than the original, more modern, whatever that means, in color and what have you not. What lacks is any sense of reality, any understanding of the time or the people. The romance is unmotivated, that action has no impact at all, music and slow-mo are overused and abused to imply epic qualities or sadness, passing trucks with wounded German soldiers. And I'd like to add here, there are way too many of those. Again, like I said, it starts with this truck, and those aren't wounded, but then we have the gym of wounded, then we have several different times where trucks of wounded German soldiers pass. It just, it becomes white noise. And again, I, I do not understand why they did this. The, the first one basically has the one time that you have trucks of wounded German soldiers, and that was, you know, that was shocking. You can't do it, you can't just keep doing it and expect it to have an effect every single time. It's, it's like they, you know, every time they ran out of ideas for what to throw the audience, they were like, 
it's been a little bit since we've showed wounded soldiers. I guess we could do that again and just yeah, and, and that's another thing. The the movie, in spite of being kind of slow, keeps trying to every so often do something that'll that'll like jolt you, something that'll shock you or be really disturbing and such. And again, that came very naturally to the original and to the book. And and I that I will say in this video as well. Read the book. It's amazing. And Yeah, and, and he points out, you know, this, it looks like something you could find on YouTube. Teenagers dress up in uniforms, wield plastic gun replicas, and insert lots of muscle flash over the action scenes. And, yeah, there's a lot of emotional porn going on here. It's really overwrought. You know, you've got these really quick, sudden shifts in tone and how people are behaving towards each other and such. And yeah, and and as another reviewer points out, you know, good war movies should include the stories of the human beings involved, narrated in an empath empathic way, thus helping the viewer to understand or at least imagine how it might have come to all the cruelty and maybe even how how it could be overcome and yeah and as he goes on to note the next war will come too soon anyway and another reviewer notes Complaints can be made about pretty much everything in the film because everything in the film lacks sophistication. The look and the atmosphere of the movie are too clean and it feels too empty. Finding scenes look boring and badly coordinated. The editing is terrible and features some bad continuity mistakes. Dialogues are flat and meaningless. Acting is behind the average. You don't believe in the character. At no point do you believe in the characters. They lack a reasonable background story. And side stories that that occur don't add to the character's depth at all. And that's really, yeah, the, the side stories are completely pointless. And the reviewer notes that you should just watch Napoli instead, and I agree. I might do a video on that one if, if I get my hands on a copy. But that movie is amazing. And as another reviewer notes, there are, you know, it's a remake, but with additional subplots of sexual nature. And And you do, of course, have the thing that these 16-year-olds are played by 25-year-olds and such. And... Moving on to characters... Apparently, the you know two, the two leads are big teen stars in Germany, and that's maybe kind of why they sexed it up, you know the and and the you know there is sexuality in the original, but given the time it was made, it is of course more hinted at and such, but 
you know, if you watch the original and you know how to read cinema, you, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you have to, like, study, uh, yeah, I'm saying if you've watched a few movies so you know how to interpret, okay, that means that, yeah, it's p pretty clear that there's sex in the original, but they couldn't really show it, and in this one, they can, you know, this was, like, depending on the, the country, apparently in Germany it's, like, age, tw age 12 and up, I I might place it a little bit higher, but as I noted in my Team America review, apparently, not apparently, in this country, you can buy, you know, my, my South Park movie DVD is for ages 11 and up, and that is worse. So, yeah, anyway, depending on the country, you know, 12, 15, 16-year-olds, you know, is what you have to be to watch this. So, you know... They can, they can go further in the sex department, and they do, and try to make it, yeah, and, and it's just, it's, it's just for the effect. You know, there's literally a character, there's a female character who is seen for four seconds total, I want to say, yeah, I'm probably being a little, she's not in it for very long. I don't think she has a single line, and she's literally just not many moments after she's first seen one of the more aggressive of the boys rips her like evening gown dress kind of thing off, and she stands there completely naked for like two seconds, and then the scene cuts. That literally means you could cut out that portion and it would change nothing. It, it, does, it doesn't like come up later or something. It's literally there so that the, the filmmakers could put a naked woman in front of the screen. And of course there is the, the aspect that, you know, this, of, this one of the boys is that aggressive. He's legitimately, you know, that is sexual assault. But it's in the, and, and you know, even if you wanted to have that, you didn't have to show the nudity. You could have, you could cut from him starting to rip to sh just show him standing with the remains of the nightgown in his hands, staring, you know, past the camera. If if what you wanted was to have that, but they wanted, you know, I don't know, if, you know, TV movies in Germany. I don't know if they like how often they cut to commercial or whatever, but I could imagine that that's one of those things that are supposed to give you a little jolt. And it's like, you know, people are sitting there falling asleep. It's how slow the movie is. I might again be over exaggerating just a little bit. And then suddenly, oh, boops, you know, oh, someone got blown up. So, yeah. And, you know, Franca Potente, the, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, she's great, even in this. The, the, you know, she's the big name. She's the international film star that they got for this. So obviously they were going to expand. She, she plays this attractive teacher, a war widow. You know, it's basically... She's she's the the yeah. There's there's in in all three of these, all three versions of this same story. At least one of the boys at least tries to have an affair with this attractive young teacher, and I'm not certain if she's the gym teacher in this one, like she is in the other two versions, but. The other two versions being the book and the 1959 version. But, yeah, you know, and in, you know, she, there's a lot about her in the book because a lot happens there. There is a full relationship. It's not a one-off thing. But most of what happens in the book, you couldn't have, it, it would be way too long for a flashback. And it happens... You know, it doesn't impact the, the story itself that much. Some of it does happen here. 
but then they take other stuff and put, you know, basically they, they, they combine a few characters into one and then there's new material and after a while just it starts to repeat and not much is accomplished before for her role we had development of different characters here it's just one who gets to do a lot of similar things she she's trying to get the boys out of you know she yeah she she tries a couple of different things in order to get the boys away from any kind of war and there are characters who do this in the yeah in in the book and thus in the 1959 version and you know obviously part part of that is the there's there's this kind of futility to it because they're they're going to end up in this that's 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 what happened way too often back then and it, 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 yeah, it illustrates the futility, and yet they keep trying. You know, each of these different adults in the involved in the children's lives in one way or another tries to save them because they look at this and they realize. And when you when you combine it all into one character, then we're just watching a character try, try, and try to do this one thing and not accomplishing it, and then it just gets kind of annoying to watch. Especially considering, again, they cut back to this character away from the, the, where the the emotional heart of the the you know the, what what we're really especially like intent on seeing is how the boys do defending the bridge. That's the, the that's where the title comes from. That's the whole point. You know, these schoolboys suddenly in this war situation and it keeps cutting away from that and showing a char showing characters not accomplishing anything you could cut if you honestly I wouldn't rule out that they like mapped out okay we have this this is all we have for the, the bridge stuff that's not gonna get us to feature length let's see what we can come up with and they come they do come up with stuff but none of it really matters and I, I kept being surprised by how little it mattered. But yeah, there's there's kind of forced sexual tension with Franca Patente. She and one of the boys are like out in this field, and then an American, you know, plane does a strafing run. You know, seeing these, you know, seeing a teenager and a young woman neither of them in military garb neither of them with arms you know immediately does uh, several strafing runs you know and oh what do you know he ends up like on top of her trying to cover her try, trying to you know protect her and then you know and and to be fair there they do actually use you know, cinema shorthand. We we see them start to take you know, clothes off, and then it cuts, and then later we you know, okay, yeah, obviously they they had sex. They didn't just take off their clothes and then oh well, let's just put them back on and keep moving. But yeah, and the yeah, several of the boys end up either having sex with her or in a situation where it looks like they might, and just yeah. I guess when you've got the chance to have teen boys have sex with single Franca Potente, you go all out. And and one of them, the the you know someone kind of walks in and, and spots them, and like the boy and it's, it's one of the more aggressive ones. He like has eye contact with with the person spotting them while making out with her and. Maybe I wouldn't have found it as funny if I hadn't watched Eye Contact Can Make Anything Creepy. But it really, it's, yeah, it's just, it's so silly to just look at this guy, you know, intense making out, you know, eye contact, just, yeah.
and there's forced kind of aggressive tension alpha male crap where again the character is aggressive in all three versions but in this they have him like you know like he he knocks one of the others down and it's apparently like by accident and then he apologizes and the other doesn't really say anything and then he like you know comes at him really aggressive and it's like I, I said I'm sorry what's your problem S say you say it's okay you know it's just and that again if you can't if you can't convey to the audience this character is kind of aggressive and the others don't necessarily like him that much and he's a little you know if you can't do that without literally having the character knock the other down and then say what, what? I said I was sorry I said I was sorry then you're a bad filmmaker and just yeah and Albert Mutz's emotional mother is in this for seconds where she had a strong role appearing for several minutes in the original and in fact the parents play a much smaller role most of them you don't even see in the original you see several of these sets of parents. you know again you have seven kids I I'd be hard-pressed to say let's see if I briefly go over mental you've got the group and fear you've got Mutz you've got I think four or five at least of these sets of parents in this you just briefly see you know you see Mutz's mother because oh it's a woman crying that'll get people you know here we go we've got you know this is we've got some emotional porn going and yeah that's and another of them you see in part because there's there's sex going on and that's where one of the boys rips off the the clothes of another and that again there's no one of the other boys is there and he does say that no don't do that nothing comes of it he doesn't like bring it up in front of the others they don't like say dude you can't do that that's not cool you know that's yeah and Moving on to short review. Die Brücke or The Bridge, 2008 TV film. Seven 16 year old schoolboys are conscripted in a small village near the end of World War II in Germany as the front moves ever closer and they are assigned to defend a the, the local bridge into town where the 1959 original is really compelling this one gets a lot wrong I will I appreciate that it does try to it it has scenes that are in the book that are not in the 1959 one and it adds a few new things that some of which are pretty decent but all in all it's just really inept the you don't really believe the characters the action has little consequence it really really wants to be like illicit and shocking so it has more sex and you know there's nudity this time around and some of the war kind of you know the the violence there is also greater moving on to the spoiler section one second please note that this video has spoilers for the subject So the yeah, as as some, I'll start actually with reviews. As other reviewers mentioned, the you know 
the, the German soldiers and such are caricatures of the stereotypical evil Nazi soldier and not human beings. And, and one notes that though it is, you know, mostly it's historically accurate, they have a Russian T-72 tank stand in for an American Sherman. That's pretty, wow. Wow, that's, I, I, I will admit, this is, this is not necessarily something that's really going to stand out to everyone. But you are going for realism. You know, it's supposed to be authentic. And yeah, those two are actually really, really different. One reviewer literally said, you know, childish propaganda disguised as realism as their one-line summary. And he writes, the, the story excuse me, turns into absurdity. Yeah, within a few hours of recruitment, the boys are treated like criminals, hounded and abused by other soldiers and officers who have, who have apparently have absolutely no regard for these kids at all. Every single adult German male under the age of 90, excepting the schoolmaster, is depicted as overbearing, abusive, aggressive, selfish, depraved, or simply drunken. And, yeah, this production is an utter insult to German war veterans who are depicted here as monsters. It perpetuates the propaganda that every single Nazi official was subhuman and that the Germans are highly susceptible to control by lunatics. And he also notes that the, the Americans are ridiculous, you know, the, the fighter plane that sprays, you know, a young couple with bullets and returns for another attempt when he misses them. And a bomber pilot spots the boys on the bridge and discharges a two-ton bomb in an effort to clear them. The fact that the bridge might be useful for his own advancing troops never occurs to him. Yeah. And... He points out that, you know, the, the, the boys, you know, the... The soldier should have been able to deal with the boys with, you know, a few grenades or mortars. And t t to be fair, that is to an extent also true of the, you know, in, in the book, it is also, you could say, you know, oh, this goes on for a while, considering that the, you know, the Americans should be able to, to stop them and such. But I, I think the book gets away with it a lot better and it is also this kind of thing where they want you know the book shows a lot of different situations over the course of one you know and and yeah a really big thing pointed out here in the review is the the boys speak and behave like 21st century you know, the lads who have just had a night on the city club scene rather than simple country schoolboys from the time of their grandfathers. And, and he points out the, the, that it's the Napola, you know, he's the, the yeah, the Napola kid is the one to blow himself up with the the Panzerfaust. When I saw him, you know, ready them, I was like, this is a this is a good element because that's something that a, he's not thinking about what if one of us you know suddenly has to grab one, what if we don't you know he's thinking they're gonna keep sending tanks. I have to ready them. You know, that's it's it's an eager sixteen year old boy is going to think that. You know, and I was thinking that, you know, everyone watching is like, you're going to, no, no, you're going to, you're going to blow up. I actually, I thought that it was going to blow up more of them than the one. But anyway, you know, it's, it's foreboding. It's really like, it's one of those things where it's not, 
it's not just setting something up that then later comes and really shocks you and surprises you. It's the kind of tragic, you can see where this is going, but you can't do anything about it, and you can understand why they're doing it. But then, then it's the Napola kid who, who and, and that completely, it's like, he didn't know, he, he didn't think to check. We saw earlier how complete, he, he knows this stuff. You know, he, he really does a, a great job with, with the others, but yeah. And, uh, yeah, and when Tolta withdraws from another unit, can destroy the bridge and thereby delay the advance, these fantasy kids aim their guns at their own comrades in an attempt to continue their mission to protect it. To be fair, that is in the the book as well. You know, the, the, the boys are just that, you know, and in the, the first film. But there, you more believe it. It it feels earned that they're completely, they're losing it at this point. Rather than arresting them, the German unit, obviously beaten by two insane schoolboys, simply abandons the bridge and sprays them with bullets as they leave. Yeah. And, again, that's not hugely different from the other versions, but there it just works. They make it work, and this one really doesn't. And... Yeah, uh, one one reviewer points out there's a really major difference that kind of spoils this remake. In the original, a non-commissioned officer is assigned to see that the boys get some duty that keeps them out of danger, some out-of-the-way place where they'll be safe. The bridge is supposed to be safe. And he's not at all like the fat, loud corporal in this movie. And... Yeah, you know, when, when he's killed while trying to save the schoolboys, it's a moving mo moment captured dramatically. And here, they they flip it completely. I was like, We're, I'm, am I watching Paul W. Anderson's the, the Three Musketeers again? It's This is a character who literally tries to... He's, he's trying to make it as... He's, he's doing the La Vita e Bella, the life is beautiful thing. He's trying to save the innocence of these kids. He's saying, okay, here you won't be in danger. You just stay right here. I'm, I'm going to go get us some, some coffee. You know, and then he's killed by overzealous, you know, I forget exactly what they're called, but, you know, military police. In this... He actually was trying to run away, and then they just catch him. So it's not so much, you know, this... I, I don't know, I... Is the movie trying to say that he's, like, cowardly? Is, is, like, is the movie saying that uh, the, the German military men who didn't want to fight, they were just cowards? Because it doesn't seem to be... I mean, this is a character who's been very negatively portrayed so far. So when we see him try to to, to desert, I, yeah, are we? Is 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 this like pro war propaganda now? And the the yeah, I I don't and. That more or less covers. Yeah, moving on to plot.
the you know when when the boys are the boys are approached by one of the American soldiers and you know basically yeah he he's saying you know we don't want to fight children and such and there it kind of tries to do the kindergarten thing from the original and it botches it completely because it's the only time the, they actually say, you know, they don't say kindergarten in the film at all. So I, I figured they were just not going for that moment. And again, it's not in the book. So, you know, that was something that they came up with for the 1959 film. And yeah, so, you know, I, I, I get that, you know, they would still shoot this this guy because they feel like they're being insulted. And the, that them surrendering would be yeah, you know, that the, they would be weak. And that, at least this scene does play the way it's supposed to, that it's tragic that the boys don't, that they're too rabid, too fanatic, too fanatical, or at least some of them are, to accept this, to, yeah, they, they would see it as weakness if they did. But then, yeah, the it didn't, use the the kindergarten thing so the yeah now the the thing with the bomb on on the IMDb boards some said that you know they wouldn't they wouldn't waste a bomb in the water and another suggests they were trying to you know to destroy the the bridge and failed or so you know, the, yeah, the, the way the bomb landed, it was intended for the bridge, but was dropped too soon or too late. My big thing with it is, how did that kill Sigi? I guess it's supposed to be shrapnel from the water? That does, I, how do you, The, the the I I also I thought that the the, the is 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 Walter the one maybe where the, the you you have the big fireball explosion of of the the truck, and then he's lying there and he seems like he's dead and I was like, are you kidding? There's no way that did not send shrapnel. That was an engine block explosion. It was not a grenade explosion. It was not a shell. They caused shrapnel when an when the engine of a car blows up, it doesn't send little bits of metal flying. Because it's not a bomb. It's not made to send little bits of metal flying. But yeah, how is in the in the other versions, what kills Sigi is the machine guns on the plane. The yeah. And and the both Sigi seeming like less less strong and, and masculine maybe than the others is so much stronger in the book and the the other film. In this, it's just like you know, well he's he's kind of overweight and he's a little soft looking in the, in the face, so I guess that's what they mean. And and you know, he drops down and they mock him for a second or two and then that's it you know when the 59 one it's a really strong moment you know and you understand both him and them and For a while of it, the boys aren't even standing guard at the bridge. They're just lying back against the sides of it. I get that they're not experienced, but they clearly take this whole business very seriously. You know, I, I get okay. They're they're like they're waiting for the the guy to come back who we know, you know, was a deserter. They they just a little bit earlier in the film they were like standing. 
you know, because the, the Napola kid was very, yeah, he, he whipped them into shape in, in almost no time at all, which was also a pretty decent moment. It was like, you know, he was just one of the boys, but suddenly he's this, you know, drill sergeant. It's, it's stark and it's, but the, the, he's not actually, yeah, the, the, after that, yeah, they just, the, we, several times we see them just lying with their back up against. In the book, they're very, they, they take it very seriously in that there should, there should definitely be someone standing guard. And, and it's, and that's in the 59 one, and it's like, am, am I allowed to eat? I'm, I'm standing guard, and just, yeah. Now, like in the original, the the American soldiers speak American English, not German. The Germans speak German when they naturally would, and Paula speaks this fairly simple American English to the soldiers. I'm I wasn't entirely sure, but at least a little of the time, it sounds like the like it is German actors speaking American English, which might be the case. But for at least some of the actors, but then I realized this is this dubbed and and the more I started to like try to see if the the lips fit what they were saying, yeah, I I think it might have been dubbed and it's just like could you really not hire like actors who could speak it fairly well? Not necessarily I I I did a quick skim of the, the actors playing Americans. As far as I could tell, they are not, you know, native English speakers, at the very least. I the the ones in the nineteen fifty-nine one, I would be very surprised if, if those are not just American actors and they speak and, and it comes completely naturally. And I will say they at least look American. You know, they're not like very clearly, yeah, you know, I don't know, Germanic or, yeah, but it just, yeah. And I kept expecting Paula to actually, to get hit for something to happen. I, I guess it's, if they just had the actress for a shooting day, I didn't know what to do with her. It leads to nothing. I guess you know she's she's upset when the American is shot right next to her, but that's that's basically it. You know, I I guess it's 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 better than for it again to be Franca running in and like no don't shoot they're just kids. You know, at least yeah, somewhere along the line they were like you know what, I think one of these scenes should go to Paul instead of Franca just. I, I really think that it's getting to be kind of ridiculous with the... And that was also like, Franca, you know, she, she tries to blackmail the, the Gruppenfuhrer father, which I think is supposed to be... In, in the book, his wife kind of blackmails him into not hurting her or their son anymore. And that's... It's a good, strong moment. It's, it's like... She's been pushed so far, and she's not stupid. She's not gonna, and she's not gonna keep taking it lying down, and so she does that. And then here, it's this. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that that you know, Franca's character seemed smart, but it's just, yeah. And and then you know, the the, you know, you you have the thing with her being, you know. Yeah, but, you know, she, oh, she, you know, she, seduction of a minor, of a ward, no less. And then, you know, well, I thought that, how about you, you call them in as witnesses, then they don't have to be in the war. And just, yeah. Was that actually, that was the last thing that happened to her, wasn't it? The, the old military officer guy just smacked her in, on the head. She fell over, I guess, unconscious. That I think that was the last time we saw her, and that's it. That's the closure her character gets. That she just she kept failing, and eventually she was knocked out for her trouble. Just yeah. And 
you you actually have this is this is such easy research. This took me two seconds to Google start page. German teenagers during World War II would not do this as a sign of victory. That was something the Allied forces, you know, the ones fighting against Germany, and, and also kind of thing in, in the Cold War and such. But you didn't. German Nazis would not be using that. And it's just, and it's there for like two seconds. You could easily have cut it out. Are you telling me that not a single person in writing, directing, filming, editing, at no point did a single person stop and say, I don't think he should do that. And, and maybe, I don't know, maybe it, it was like last minute, hey, let's it just you know, throw, a, throw a victory sign or something. Again, just in editing, just, you know, get out a device, search for two seconds. It was not something that they did back then, plain and simple. And it again, it's such a like the like the T seventy two. Why didn't you just go that extra little bit? You you were so close. I looked very closely at every single gun in the film. As far as I know, every single gun that we see in the film is something that was actually used by that side at that time. The Germans are all using. You know, you've got the MP forty. You've got the the one that looks a little bit like an, an like an assault rifle almost, and the yeah, just it it. But then right there, they yeah. And one of the teens calls a plane Charlie. I are they are they thinking of are are they taking that from the Vietnam War where you know Americans would say Charlie short for Victor Charlie short for, which is you know what, what is that. What is that called again? Zulu? Or, or is that just the time? Something? Anyway, yeah. Victor Charlie, VC, Viet Cong. You know, so that instead of saying, I saw a Viet Cong, they could just say, I saw a Charlie. You know. Or VCs over there. You know, they, they didn't have to, but I don't, you know. In, in World War II, like if they were if they were English, the Germans would call them Tommies. They called the Americans Amis or Yankees Amis, short for American. And they, they use that in the book as well. They they called the Americans Amis all the time. And you know, I, I read it translated into Danish, but they left a, a bunch of those things intact. You know, I, I've never heard a Danish person say Ami short for American. We just say American. Amaikena. And and you know, you actually you have kind of a strong moment, you know, one of the boys is shot and he falls onto one of the others and he's bleeding profusely into the other's mouth and, and the other one really loses it. That's a good scene. I don't it's it's like every third day that they worked on this, they did a good job, you know. A good job, but then just the rest of the time, it's like, what are we doing? Yeah. And that covers that. Now, moving on from the movie itself. I'm calling this section not helping out. I've spent a lot of time around introverts in my life, and I find a lot of people seem to think like they're they're selfish or something because they don't like they don't offer up help or they don't necessarily actively help. Like if if people are like you know, if, let's say that everybody just got done playing a board game or something, the introvert maybe doesn't like grab a few pieces and help to put it in the box and such. And the, you know, I, I would, I like to say, don't think that someone is selfish unless you have really great reason to, you know, 
people who were spoiled as children and or the rich, or people you've known for a while where you see, you know, okay, they are legitimately selfish, but, you know, in my experience, introverts are anxious, they maybe think they can't help, maybe they even worry that they'll do more harm than good, but, you know, yeah, if they're not, yeah, the, you know, let's say that Bill isn't helping Joe move a table. If Joe is walking backwards while holding on to his end of the table, Bill needs to know when to slow down, when to stop, when to walk and such. And if Bill isn't comfortable or experienced in communicating with others in, in that kind of, you know, maybe especially in that kind of situation, and or isn't very good at practical matters, he might get it wrong and feel excessively bad when, yeah, once he gets it wrong. But, yeah, I... I Personally, I've found that people who are selfish are more likely to, they, they might help out, but then they'll want excessive credit for it, or they, yeah, they, they treat it as if they shouldn't really have to help, and make a big deal out of, you know, helping if they're maybe asked to it or something, but, yeah.